Boulder City, situated in the Mojave wasteland, is found west of the Hoover Dam and southeast of the 188 trading post. Originally, the city was a mere huddle of makeshift tents and sheds along the river, constructed to accommodate the workers labouring on the Boulder Dam. By 1930, Boulder City was developed to offer sustainable housing and amenities for the 5,000 dam workers. Officially recognised in 1931, concurrent with the initiation of the dam work, the city was a public entity operated by the Bureau of Reclamation and Six Companies Incorporated, intended to be a paragon of community organisation. This involved a careful selection of entrepreneurs, the introduction of visitor permits, and a rigid prohibition on alcohol. It was only later in the century that the city was incorporated, maintaining its small scale and contained demeanour akin to the neighbouring Henderson. Perhaps because it was a marginal town in the late 21st century, Boulder City weathered the Great War nearly untouched, transforming into a peaceful frontier town that continued to function until 2277, when the first Battle of Hoover Dam occurred. Abandoned by its inhabitants, the city was filled with explosives and turned into a trap for Caesar's Legion. The Legion forces, drawn in by Chief Hanlon's tactical retreat, were buried by the collapsing town. For the cost of one town, the NCR managed to cripple the Legion's offensive and push it back across the Colorado River. The Boulder City Memorial, situated at the town's western entrance, pays tribute to the fallen NCR troopers of the battle. The aftermath of the battle saw the near-complete destruction of the city, with only the concrete mixing yard, the Boulder City train station and the Big Horde Saloon remaining. Over the subsequent years, the ruins served as a pit stop for caravans and a source of concrete for the NCR's fortifications along the Colorado River, produced using limestone transported by train from Quarry Junction. However, the cessation of limestone mining due to a recent death clot infestation resulted in the concrete workers abandoning the town, leaving only Ike, the town saloon's bartender, as the sole inhabitant. The remnants of the town, almost deserted, are scant. A wandering merchant regularly traverses the distance between the Bighorn Saloon and the El Dorado Gas and Service along the Western Highway, occasionally pausing at the train station. The entrance road to the city leads to the only intact structure, the Bighorn Saloon. The saloon features a main bar area and a back room, hosting four tables to the left and five to the right of the entrance. Directly in front is the bar counter, managed by the barkeep, Ike. A back room secured with a simple lock, stocked with crates of Sunset Sarsaparilla, is found to the right of the bar. The Bighorn Saloon is geographically positioned at the same location as the real-world Bighorn restaurant in Boulder City, Nevada. Unique finds in the saloon include three bottles of Nuka-Cola quartz on the middle shelf of the back wall, and a Sunset Sarsaparilla star bottle cap on the second table on the left upon entering. The Boulder ruins, dominated by the remains of homes and businesses, make up the city's landscape. The ruins are accessed via the northeastern entrance and consist mainly of a row of dilapidated buildings encircled by an impenetrable belt of ruined concrete and brick. An NCR barricade separates the ruins from the rest of the city, manned by Lieutenant Munro. The remains of Ranger Teresa Lutz and two other troopers can be found in a house opposite the ruins entrance. The Great Can hideout is home to Jessup and another Great Can's member taking refuge from NCR troopers. Privates Ackerman and Gilbert of the NCR are held hostage by the Cans. This hideout, likely a store before the First Battle of Hoover Dam, houses a service counter with a cash register at the front and a broken display case containing trivial items. The back room houses a few makeshift beds, ammunition boxes and shattered shelving units. The body of the Cans member McMurphy rests on one of the beds. Significant items include Jessup's bandana and an engraved cigarette lighter both of which can be obtained by killing or pickpocketing Jessup or through peaceful resolution of the NCR Great Cans conflict. Perched near the western entrance, one can behold the imposing Boulder City Memorial. This testament to courage pays tribute to the brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives during the First Battle of Hoover Dam. In the tumultuous year of 2277, Boulder City met its tragic fate, serving as a calculated trap set by the New California Republic during the iconic battle. As the smoke settled and the ruins whispered tales of a fierce conflict, the NCR constructed this memorial to commemorate the 107 rangers and service members who had laid down their lives during the battle. A solitary figure, Private Kowalski, can be spotted standing before the memorial, his silent vigil a testament to his fallen brother, Private First Class Donald Kowalski. Carved on the stone memorial is a solemn inscription. On this spot, in the year 2277, rangers and soldiers of the NCR turned back the forces of Caesar's Legion 
during the Battle of Hoover Dam. Over 100 men and women gave their lives on the Nevada soil to defend local civilians and the principles of the Republic. May this humble stone be an enduring memorial to their valour and sacrifice. Tread carefully, for any attempt to harm the memorial incites a confrontation with Private Kowalski. A similar consequence follows the act of photographing the memorial with the Kodak R9000. The Boulder City Memorial's location parallels the geographical area of the real-world Southern Nevada Veterans Memorial Cemetery in Boulder City. An intriguing detail emerges upon examination of the names of the deceased. Many share their last names with NCR soldiers and citizens from Fallout 2 and Fallout New Vegas, including names such as Datry, Dumont, Gorobetz, Hayes, Myers, Kowalski and Roger Weston. In the northern outskirts of Boulder lies the Boulder City train station, an intriguing edifice of the past. This structure houses an array of fascinating elements, bark scorpions, a Nuka-Cola vending machine, a hard-locked safe, an average locked terminal, and a sunset sarsaparilla vending machine. As mentioned earlier, a travelling merchant often frequents this relic of a bygone era, while an accessible Barstow Express train patiently rests on the tracks. Across the railroad tracks north of the train station, an industrial structure has made its home. At the top of the industrial structure's ramp, one can find a duffel bag surrounded by empty jet inhalers. This bag contains an interesting assortment of items, including two trail mixes and some NCR money. The Boulder City train station finds its real-world counterpart in the Nevada State Railroad Museum. The elevation sign above the tracks closely resembles the real-world equivalent, with a minor variation. In-game, the sign reads Elevation 2500, whereas the real world sign states Elevation 2475. Echoing the spirit of the real world city, the in-game sign also bears the motto Home of the Eagles, mirroring the real world Boulder City High School's mascot and motto. And now, once again, we return to the story of the Courier and their quest to identify the ringleader of their assailants. Guided by a sense of relentless determination, the courier unfurls their path towards Boulder City, a name whispered by the wind and etched into their memory by Manny Vargas. Manny, who offered clarity to a fragment of the courier's shattered past, unveiled the destination of those elusive shadows, those assailants whose deeds were forever imprinted in the courier's mind, the Great Cans. Like predators to their den, these marauders had slithered away to the sanctuary of Boulder City. Emboldened by this newfound knowledge, the courier strides forth into the wilderness, their journey woven with threads of vengeance and truth. Their silhouette blurs into the sun-baked horizon, a lone warrior navigating the unforgiving landscape, drawn inexorably towards the gritty embrace of Boulder City and the ghosts that await therein. In the heart of the ruins, the great cans, desert marauders sculpted by hardship and painted with defiance, have ensnared NCR hostages, innocent lambs caught amidst the wolves. These prisoners, symbols of the NCR's tentative grasp on the Mojave, are shackled within the crumbling confines of the can hideout. Their faces are etched with fear, their voices swallowed by the grim silence of the ruins. Like a cruel dance, this is a stage set by the cans, leveraging lives for survival turning the chessboard of power into a tangled web of negotiation, threats and potential violence. Lieutenant Monroe stands like a beacon in the chaos, the beginning of this twisty quest. He guards the door, a portal to choices yet unknown, yet consequential. The courier strides forward, eyes fixed on Monroe, offering to help free the hostages. The path ahead splits into three intricate avenues. The first option, negotiation, a play of diplomacy amidst a storm of bullets and blood. Here, the Boulder City ruins lie like an open book, riddled with secrets and dangers. A shadowy building in the distance houses the Great Can hideout, Jessup hiding within like a spider in his web. A game of words ensues, the courier wielding speech like a weapon, skillfully convincing Jessup to release the hostages. Information flows like a river, Jessup unveiling the mystery of the platinum chip and pointing the way to Benny. The second choice leads down a path of blood and violence. The cans are to be eradicated, freedom for the hostages gained at the price of lives. Each can falls, the ruins echoing with the sound of gunfire. With the cans eliminated, the hostages are released, a bitter taste of freedom in the midst of bloodshed. This act earns fame with the NCR but draws the ire of the great cans. The third choice is a betrayal, a backstab. The NCR troops must fall, including Lieutenant Monroe. The ruins bear silent witness to the carnage, a sombre symphony of death. With the NCR soldiers eliminated, the cans are informed of their freedom. The choice to free, leave or kill the hostages remains, each decision fraught with consequences. The deed earns the courier fame with the great cans, 
but stirs the wrath of the NCR. In our telling of the tale, the courier opts for the peaceful choice, negotiation. The return to Lieutenant Monroe is a walk of triumph, hostages released, situation diffused, yet Monroe's words cast a pall of tension. Orders to kill the Great Cans persist, hostages or no. Diplomacy takes centre stage again, the courier convincing Monroe to honour the deal, to spare the cans. This decision echoes across the factions, the courier hailed as a hero, gaining fame. A toll can be negotiated, caps offered for the can's escape. Jessup, if spared, provides an engraved cigarette lighter, a crucial piece of evidence against Benny. With the choice made, the path ahead seems clear. The identity of their would-be killer now revealed, the journey to New Vegas beckons. A final confrontation with Benny lies in wait, a reckoning lurking in the heart of New Vegas. The costs and consequences are uncertain, yet the courier's resolve is unbroken. The hunt for justice continues, the story of the courier writing itself with every step they take.